Hey everybody, before I show you guys this stuff, for anybody new, man, on the 2600, that's bootleg or whatever, fake, copyright violation, counterfeit, whatever the hell, here is, once again, my real Atari 2600 Junior. As you can see, nice big Atari logo, and then 2600 off to the side, and then sticker on the bottom says Atari. Everything is the way it should be. And this even a little more or less now that I was cleaning it as it was normally when you get these brand new there is a sticker over that just like any electronics you get nowadays that's just to protect that metal from getting marred up and you can peel it off this one it's like they just put a big freaking like roll of masking tape over it or something man so it was really nasty dirty and when I took it apart, the prongs busted off on the uh, power switch on what holds it in place. So it just kind of sits in there now. Otherwise, all it says is 2600. Then TV game console, video computer game, and a serial number. There are no logos for any company, let alone Atari on this thing. Nor are there any on the circuit board. Circuit board, I've looked all over. There's just nothing other than just numbers to correspond with whatever model they thought this was. And then on these switches, the one that popped off there, power switch. The switch is normally for color or black and white TVs. It is fake. As you can see, it just slides real easy up and down there is nothing under it to switch on and off and then the way they did the reset and the select switch they're just spring loaded and literally there is a plastic post under each one of them with a phillips head screw in the end of that post and the head of the screw touches a metal plate plate that's bent like this and then just pushes down on it to touch a piece of wire that's the contact to do the reset and stuff, which those I had to mess with. The wire was all mashed, so I bent it back up, so now those work. Then on the back of it, a little bit different configuration. Instead of the uh, power supply being dead center, it's where the uh, channel select switch would be. There is no channel select on this. And then that's the RF controllers, and then those two switches are your difficulty. First off, I'm getting the sucker to turn on the right way, other than getting a bunch of garbage on screen as I originally and figured it'd work, used a regular old 9 volt Atari 2600 adapter. It didn't like that for some reason. All I was getting was just not really garbage, but just a really, really poor signal for a game screen or just nothing at all. It just didn't like it. So I don't know what's up on it, if the configuration's off on the polarity or what, but uh, these, and I recommend if you're into collecting retro, hunt around at your thrift stores or just junk stores and find one. You can usually get them cheap. I think I paid like 50 cents for this. Anyways. This is an old school variable adapter that goes from 3 volt up to 12 volt and then you can change the polarity from positive to negative. And definitely old school this has the older hookup on it to where you get the two headphone jack style and then two more common and then 9 volt. So uh, Hooked it up. Thing wants positive polarity Got it to work on 9 volt, and I thought it was doing all right until I started playing a game, which uh, played the Fender on this. Plays beautifully. Color is off on all the games, and there's no way to adjust it. Yeah, like on Defender, all the buildings are pink. So really weird on the colors, but works nonetheless, and all the sounds and graphics are good. Just the color. But uh, once I started getting past like the first couple of levels all of a sudden I was hearing this god awful sound 
screeching on the speakers like, okay, I got to turn this thing off. Something's going to blow up. It didn't sound good at all. So unplugged it and took the voltage down to 7.5. I took it down to 6 at first, but uh, it seems to like 7.5 volt. 6, it will work, but it's just a little too weak to where you're getting static in the sound and stuff. So not only did they screw up on the look of it, the voltage is off. Maybe because they got less stuff in it, I don't know. So, for what works on it is, uh, it does not accept all Atari games, even Atari brand. I knew it'd probably have a problem with some of the aftermarket, but, uh, so far it's, if the game works as in fits inside the damn thing and stays there, it will usually play it. If it doesn't fit or just fits too loose, like it's not picking up on the circuit board, won't do it. So, uh, cartridge slots just off a hair or whatever. Same thing on the depth of where the uh, pin connector is. I think it's just a little bit too low to where on games that I got to work like Defender, it's just grabbing on to the pins. And, uh, like one Atari game that I couldn't get to work and it wouldn't even fit was um, Crystal Castles. Just wouldn't fit right, like it wouldn't line up. Tried all the magic carts that I had over there by the TV. None of them will fit at all and will not even grab onto the little circuit board. Which obviously, the depth is too much. And then other ones, just same thing, just wouldn't fit. But uh, what I did get to work on it, other than Defender, was Missile Command, tried Centipede, and uh, I can't remember the name of the games. I had a couple oddball ones that were just weird companies, but they looked more like the shape of a real Atari cart. They worked all right. So it's kind of like <laughs> maybe it works with about 70% of the Atari games, maybe less, when you include in all the aftermarket. And now that I got it working, man, and unlike the ones that I saw pictures of and a little bit of info online, they were saying those ones had it to where there was an extra switch somewhere to where they have games built in like the flashback systems and stuff and depending on what country it came from depends on how many games I guess or whatever this no games built in it is outright a knockoff clone whatever of this so <laughs> that either lowers the value or ups it man I don't know so once again that is the first one I've ever had my hands on they must be scarce as hell at least here in the United States, maybe if you're in another country, they may be more abundant. Like one of them was Atari Age that I found the pictures on. I think they were saying there was one that was out of Brazil and one out of Australia. And they're just more common on making knockoff stuff because there weren't that many copyright laws, kind of like with China and stuff nowadays. They got, got away with a lot more. Too bad it isn't stamped made in the USA or it would be worth a ton because, I mean, outright copyright violation there. That would be worse than, like, Coleco making the Gemini and whatnot. So, that's that. Now, I'm uh, going to show you guys what I did on the 32X to get it working. Mind how I did it. <laughs> It is working nonetheless, and it's not a permanent thing that I did to it. I'm going to make it permanent eventually, like maybe next month sometime. When I'm not having to take penicillin, which is making me just really idiotic. As a Friday, I ended up with a bad tooth infection, abscess or whatever, man, to where I got to have a molar pulled. But I got to take penicillin throughout the day up till next Thursday when I get it pulled. Never thought I'd look forward to having a friggin' molar pulled. 
But this stuff, I, I've never had penicillin before. It's not like a side effect. It's just, it makes you feel really funky, just drugged out. Like I got a tranquilizer dart hanging off my ass cheek. It's not fun stuff. Can't think straight. Can't do nothing. So once again, mind me on the fact <laughs> that, yes, that is my most awesome mod I've ever done. That's how I got it working, man. Scotch tape, wire, and paper clips. That's how you get your old school games working. Remember that, kids. Anyway, it's on the paper clips, man. I just cut them and stuck them in the right pinholes for the Genesis and the 32X and then just linked them together with wire. And on linking them together, I recommend doing this if you have one of these to where you don't have all the hookups is in that stupid friggin cable that links them together just look up pinouts for model 2 Sega Genesis model 3 or whatever they're the same on the 32x and at first and it's the first thing I did and then it's like I get it all hooked up and then no and that was pissing me off because I was just not thinking straight so it just got me upset gave up for a while and then I uh, found a website somewhere that was talking about having problems getting theirs to work to where they didn't get the cable and they were wanting to make up a cable and uh, the guy was saying that the way you do it is through the RGB is that's how it obtains the signal or links it or whatever the friggin hell it does to make this son of a bitch work so that's what you gotta hook up is the RGB red green blue and then another wire that you got to hook up is um, the sink. So when you find the diagram or whatever that shows all the pinouts, man, it'll label out each thing. So just those four things and then your sound. You don't have to do any ground wires. I thought you would at first, but I don't have it grounded and it's working great. So it must obtain the ground through the cartridge slot. Now on hooking up the sound for it, I did it through mono because the only cable that I have for a Sega Genesis of any type is the stupid RF box type ones. And those, the sound goes through just mono. Otherwise, if you do have it set up for composite with a cable or plan to mod it for composite video, go through the left right stereo. On taking one of these puppies apart, I got started, but man, my brain was just not working, so it's like, okay, I need to stop before I break this damn thing. So, I say, man, maybe next month I will take it apart and just, I've got a bunch of these Model 2 Genesis systems, so what I'm going to do is just do direct wire and just solder everything in place and have it nice and hidden. And then maybe AV mod the 32X. Otherwise, it works great. So, killer freaking score for my buddy Jim, man. Everything seems to work good. Not going to show it, but uh, the Intellivision, I hadn't tested it out when I showed that last vid. I tested it out today. It works like new. So, every single system does great. So, that's one of the best deals I've gotten from them. Too bad this dude that had this stuff's moving out of town, man. <laughs> it really is, because he had a lot of cool stuff. So, catch you guys later. Once again, man, you can just get online and just... All I do is just go into Yahoo and search under pictures, images, and just type in pinouts for Sega Genesis Model 2, and you'll get what you want. And then you can hook it up as good as I did. Maybe even better, man. Use gum if you're out of scotch tape. Shit. Later.